Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Nate Max interview show. And today we're going to be talking to a very special guest, someone that has been on the show in a minute, but I'm very happy to have back on the rock star renegade himself, Solomon Oz. How you doing? Doing good. That's good. Uh, I hope everything's been going good. I uh, hope everything's cleared up. I know that yeah. you got hurt in your last match. Uh, how you been? It's been a while. I'm doing good. Had my body rested, had my mind cleared out. Took a personal leave of absence. And then between then and now, I know a lot of stuff I've been going on in company, especially with the championships. Mm -hmm. Like how you guys kept Dakota Nix as champion, and then even have Tyler Quinn as Revolution champion. Yeah, well, have you seen how he's been winning? You've seen how Tyler's been winning. The little BS thing he pulled at the recent show, which he wanted to say was legal. I highly doubt that. It's just complete crap they keep doing this. And, like, the thing that I'm scared about is the new talent. They're going to come here and get attacked by this master plan. What's your thoughts on them? They formed this trio. They're just going around and just hurting people, yeah, destroying I, I things. I've seen it. i seen it. They're like a pack of wolves attacking whoever they can find. You, Patrick, Bones, Plague. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Don White had to pull out Plague. To face Knicks, they pushed him to that limit, and that's the thing. And they even stopped play. So I'm wondering what else we can do, because there's not much more options we have. But, anyways, we'll figure that all mess out later. But what's your what's your plans coming up to the next season? This is a brand new season of AEW, season four to be exact. We've seen you before in previous seasons. You obviously you've changed two times. What is your plans leading into this brand new season? We've got the Revolution Championship. We've got the AEW Championship. We got Climb for Life. We got all kinds of brand new stuff happening this year. So, despite what may have happened in the second half of last season, I still remain the longest undefeated streak in history of this company. That doesn't come by seven. Right? That doesn't come by accident. Something like that, yeah. Seven or eight. The streak. It's the longest. That was a streak. I remember you made a belt for it too until some I think Nick's destroyed it or something like that. Yeah. That was bad, Nick. How would you do that? Stuff you like, like custom belt. Stuff management. like that doesn't come by accident. No, it doesn't. And you know, I you got a lot of main event shots last year. I feel like you would have won one of those. Oh, I would have won. If, you know what happened to Climb for Life? Yeah. Nick's came out with zip ties, I tied me up. Him to stop you know what that happened match. at Doomsday? Tyler Quinn had to come out and help Nick's injure me. Yeah. I wanted to stop both matches, but they were both no disqualification. So I don't there blame, I don't blame I you. Do. I'm not gonna shoot the messenger. I'll say I was out of my hands. I just had to do what I had to do for now. as a ref. Yeah. But uh, Pride or Pain is coming up. Now, obviously, you beat me last year at Pride or Pain. And this year, there's going to be some new things happening. So, Pride or Pain, what is Solomon Oz going to do there at the biggest show of the year to make an impact? My undefeated streak may have ended prematurely, but I guarantee that my Pride or Pain streak would not end. Hmm. I will not be defeated at Pride of Pain this year. Very strong words. Very strong words. So we have a bunch of new talent coming to AEW. New guys that want to come here, get opportunities like everybody else. Who haven't you faced yet that you like to face? Or who's someone that you want to have a match with? I haven't faced a set of bones. I have faced that new guy, Justin Calloway. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll face one of them this year. That's a good idea. Yeah, I hope so, man. I, I, that would be great matchups right there. So let's see what you guys do in the ring. Um, so thoughts on the fact that, so last year, obviously, you had a lot of momentum build up. You know, you won a Pride or Pain against me. You made me tap out, which doesn't always happen. I don't think I've ever gotten tapped out before by anybody. So that was a big win. And, you know, that was a, I wouldn't necessarily call it a fair match, but... Like I've said many times before, if an opportunity comes, hey, you gotta pass take it. Pass is the pass. Yeah, that's water underneath the bridge. Just, don't, just don't forget about it. Oh, I never did. I never did. And I thought, I thought, uh, 
I thought, you know what? I'm gonna see where song. I mean, plus I seen the change in you, man, and I seen how you changed your attitude. You came back, you know, and you really, you know, you made the main event scene. It's really hard to do that, you know, and especially with dealing with Nick's and Tyler. So you had a lot of momentum built up last year. Obviously, when you went to the shows, you went to the main event. You had main event at Doomsday, main event at uh, Kai for Life. You've also faced Nick's for the Revolution Championship at New Beginning. Uh, all three times you came up short. Do you think this year you will beat Dakota Nix? Doesn't matter if I beat him or not. What matters is that I move on. I grow from it. I mean, I've lost the opportunity for the championship time and time again, but that doesn't mean I'm defeated. That doesn't mean I fall back to the bottom of the barrel. Even if it does, I still climb out and become top dog. Yeah. That's what you got to do, you know, once you get down in that rut, you know, you just got to dig yourself back out, you know, and there's always opportunity, there's always chances. Let, let me ask you a question. Okay, shoot. Time and time again, this matchup plan has bullied you relentlessly. What are you going to do about it? Well, if it were up to me, I would slap Tyler Quinn in his face, and I would slap Dakota Nix in his face. Because I think personally, this is on a personal note, I think they're both cowards. I think they're both parasites. As a matter of fact, they're parasites that feed off of each other. But I can't do anything right now because legally I can't touch Dakota Nix or Tyler Quinn or Justin Callaway. Due to a contract that has been given to me, I'm still employed by AEW, but I can't have any kind of physical altercations with Quinn or Nix or Callaway. So they kind of put me in handcuffs. But yeah, I've seen the rest of the locker room. Ronnie Patrick, Isaiah Bones, Don Wyatt. They all have a run of these massive plan people. They've been attacked by them backstage. They've been attacked in during the match. They've been outnumbered. Is anyone gonna stop them? I've been talking to some people and we've been forming something. Something's you you, you have them, they both hold the championships of this company. They have this company under right. lock and key. Right, and I think I've learned slowly that we've all been beaten individually by them. So, I think... I, I just think it's something. time something is done about that. I think it's just time for it all to change. I agree. If, you, if you're not going to be able to do anything about it, who is? That I don't know, but what I do know is that I've been talking to people and we do have something planned. And when this plan comes into fruition, Tyler Quinn and Nix and Callaway will all regret what they've done because AEW is not the land of Quinn. It is not the reign of a championship that Nix has, which by the way, his reign wouldn't be anything if it wasn't for Quinn, Quinn finds the littlest ways to get the most awful victories. Victories that he Quinn, cheats for. Because Quinn can't win by himself. He can't. He really can't. And the only time, the only reason why he beat me before is that I took him lightly. And, the, you know, that's why I, I said before, I'll say it again. Tyler Quinn will not face me again. He will never step foot in that ring again because he knows... For a fact that if he ever faces me again, he's not going to face the party animal. He's not going to face the three Ps. He's going to face a brand new Nate Max. And I do got some more words I want to say. But I want to save that for another time. Because this is an interview. I am asking you questions. But I do agree with you. Something will happen. That's what Nix and Quinn and Callaway don't know. Something's going to happen. Something will be a roadblock in their way. They just don't know what it is yet. But like I told many people before, man, timing, opportunity, and when it happens is where it happens. So, yeah, believe me. I mean, Robbie Patrick has a briefcase, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. from Ignacio, who has been missing. You know anything about that? I don't know. Ignacio just like went missing one day, left his mask on the ground. So, so 
Your best <laughs> friend. Your best friend goes missing months ago, and you have done nothing about it. No, no, no I did. I was You've done nothing about it, it you, Patrick. We were him. looking for him, but we. Yeah, you gave we up. Have no clue where you he's just at. Just gave up. Actually, no. We thought. I'm pretty sure he could be dead. I'm pretty sure Dexter Pierce did something. He's gonna blame the redneck. I. <laughs> I don't know, man. This is getting like an art awkward interview. It's, so it's my interview now. What the fuck? Cut the camera. <laughs> the I, you, don't have, you don't have to do that. All I'm asking is that guy goes missing. What are you going to do about it? <sighs> We've been trying to look for I, Ignacio for a while now, and we haven't been able to find him. We thought it was Dexter here, so we still don't know who it is. But one day, we got to find him. But we're going to be looking for him. And freaking Alien kept on sending me these weird alien messages from like his spaceship saying he wanted to help us look for him. So I was like, I don't know why he keeps on freaking sending these alien rays to me. But I guess if you, if you really don't know anything about it, I two, don't put know two, who two, did it. I thought two, it was Quinn. Put two and two together. You got the master plan who's bullying everyone. And you know who had the briefcase before Riley Patrick? Yeah. The only guy that can defeat Nyx without a sanctioned match. But then why wouldn't Tyler Quinn just book himself to win the briefcase? That's the case. Because he wants to look good. He doesn't want to look bad for the public. He, he owns the company, right? He doesn't want everyone to unsubscribe. He doesn't want to lose his subscribers and viewers. Mm, good point. But, yeah, I, we don't know where Ignacio is, but I'm pretty sure that me and Riley are trying to look for him soon. And Alien wants to help us out at some point. That dude, that dude bothers me. What's your thoughts on Alien? That dude's weird. That dude touched me. I haven't met him yet. Really bad way. We're going to see what happens backstage. He should learn not to do that. He's going to get in a lot of trouble if he keeps doing that. Yeah, yeah, you got any more questions for me during my interview? I guess I can just ask you one last thing. What does 2021 and season four of AW mean to Solomon Osborne? Solomon Oz, sorry. Redemption. Okay. That's the one word that describes it? You got no more plans? I'll leave it like that for now. Alrighty then. Well, I guess uh, you got some concerts to go do, Mr. Rockstar. <laughs> but uh, anyways, thanks for uh, being on. Appreciate the interview. Good luck to you this season. I hope that everything goes well, and I hope that, you know, the injury and everything is 100%. No, I'm 100% right now. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, I hope to see you at Pride or Pain. I'll see you guys later. Make sure to check out Pride or Pain. It's going to be our first pay-per-view back at AEW. New season coming soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been the Nate Max Interviews. Peace out.